Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Um, may I ask, um, please turn on your camera so I can see you guys. Thanks. Good to see you again. Um, okay. Um, so before we start, um, do you have any question? Um, do you need any clarification about the quiz um, or the material that we have discussed um, on Tuesday? So you know that you have until tomorrow um, to submit your answer uh, for the quiz. Um, make sure to do so uh, by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Oh, hold on. I missed class yesterday. When were we turning the quiz? I missed everything as class period. Uh, you need to submit tomorrow uh, by 5 p.m. Um, did you receive um, email through Piazza uh, that I sent instruction? Uh, I think so. I can check. Yeah, please uh, make sure that you have access. Uh, I presume all of you have access to get Gradescope. Um, so the quiz can be found on Gradescope. So um, make sure you have access. Um, I already um, basically added your email. Um, use your um, your email address uh, to access Gradescope. Um, the access code is also on Piazza uh, in one of those questions if you need. Uh, and the questions uh, are basically uh, about um, simple stuff, binary representation, number systems, um, some basic digital design, um, which you already should know. Um, from the prerequisite of this course. Um, so hopefully you can, all of you can do very good um, in the first uh, quiz. Um, so it should be fun. Um, so today um, we continue uh, our discussion um, that we had on Tuesday. You remember uh, we had uh, discussed um, several um, basically um, assembly um, instruction. Um, we discussed that this um, instruction is the language of the machine that you can talk with. Um, basically, machine that you want to program understand these uh, instructions. Um, and Although we did not review all uh, uh, instructions in LC3 or MIPS, um, you um, somehow saw um, some notable instruction and you got some understanding how these can, how these instruction can be encoded um, uh, on machine um, and how they get um, basically, um, um, and how, machine can understand them with zero and one. Today, the plan is to understand uh, from the execution perspective. Um, when you tell computer particular instruction like add uh, or load word, uh, how this really gets executed on the machine, which is a bunch of uh, logic gates. Um, so today the plan is to go deeper, um, understand, understand this from the execution perspective, uh, what really happens on the computer uh, when we execute them. Um, okay. Um, um, so um, and by, by execution, you know that the machine has um, some building blocks uh, for, for example, executing computation happens in ALU, uh, arithmetic logic unit, um, for example, for addition, right? So 
we discussed about the art instruction. Uh, when we use this art, um, it definitely, we definitely need ALU for executing um, this, uh, this instruction. Uh, but for example, for um, other instructions such as load word, we probably don't need ALU because there's no calculation, arithmetic calculation happening. Uh, we need to uh, retrieve some uh, data uh, from a very specific address in the memory and retrieve it and put it somewhere. Um, so there is no particular calculation is, is involved. But you have some building blocks, different building blocks, um, in order to execute these uh, particular commands. Um, but um, as I said, like um, the question is that how these instructions are executed um, in finer grain way, um, not at the instruction level, but like uh, at a more finer grain uh, way that um, we can understand it from the uh, um, lower level. Um, um, what's happening on the on the machine and this is uh, the process is called uh, instruction cycle um, uh, which basically consists of multiple steps or multiple phases um, fetch uh, decode evaluate address uh, fetch operand execute and store result these are um, basically the six steps uh, of the instruction cycle, uh, which uh, today we go uh, one by one to understand what's happening there. Fetch is basically um, at a high level, um, we fetch the particular uh, uh, command, uh, and then um, in the decode, we decoded what exactly um, this command uh, is, uh, whether it's addition, or is load word. Um, basically, we need to uh, decode it um, exactly uh, what, uh, what it is. And then um, you saw that some of these uh, instructions have some um, need some uh, accessing to the memory. So we need to evaluate addresses. Um, not all of these um, instructions need this step. And then we need to fetch operands. Um, these um, operands that are used, for example, for add, you saw that you had three operands. You have two source operand and one destination operand. Um, and then you need to execute this um, uh, in order to, for example, for add, you need to add two numbers. Um, is um, is easy to execute this. And then once you have the result, you need to store um, this um, result of execution, whatever it is, um, to a destination. Um, for add uh, is a target uh, destination register um, that you need to um, store the result inside. So at the high level is simple, but we want to understand what's really going on um, inside the computer, um, LC3 computer that uh, we have a rough idea about its uh, major building blocks. Okay. Um, and essentially, um, these six steps um, um, are executed uh, in a loop. Um, so once you're done with the uh, store result in the first uh, cycle, the next cycle would uh, start right away from the fetch. So this is running in the loop and um, essentially, your computer is running in a loop um, with these two key ideas that we discuss um, several times. Um, basically, um, your program um, is stored in memory um, 
and it executed sequentially. Um, so um, once you retrieve it, it um, basically you you um, you execute uh, these commands one by one um, in a loop, um, and this is um, how uh, one human model looks like. This is the um, the way how one human uh, model um, executes um, or operate. Um, any questions so far? This um, these will get a lot more clear when when we go uh, and explain each of them one by one. Uh, let's start by fetch, um, which is the first step. In fetch, um, we want to obtain the instruction from memory um, and put it in the instruction register, uh, which is uh, a particular register. Um, we talked about it previously. Um, or IR, if, if you remember. Um, this phase basically is common uh, and necessary uh, for all instruction, no matter what type uh, we have. Um, and it's uh, basically consists of three steps um, itself. Um, the first step, um, we load the um, MAR uh, with the content of the PC. If you remember, PC um, maintains the location uh, of the next uh, memory um, address that you need to uh, know. Um, we discuss about this, and PC would increment one by one. Um, so you need to load the um, uh, PC into MAR. You need to put the uh, PC into MAR. Um, and at the same time, you need to increment the PC by one. Um, so um, this is the first step, very simple. Um, and I hope you remember what MAR is, memory address register. Um, this particular register that you require um, to put um, an address in order to retrieve from memory. Um, on the next slide, you will see that. Um, so first step is to load MAR with the PC. The second is to, once you know the particular address, you need to retrieve uh, the content from the memory and put it in MDI. MDR, uh, memory um, data register. Um, this is again, um, like MAR is a particular register that you use to store the contents of the memory that you needed for any uh, instruction. And in the last step, uh, you load the um, um, IR with the content of the uh, MDR. Um, IR is the instruction register that uh, we talked about. Um, so you put the content, whatever it is, from MDR into the uh, instruction register. So this is, um, if you remember, um, we had this PC3 and uh, LC3 um, computer that um, had multiple different components. Um, these um, five components, uh, control unit, processing unit, input, output, and memory. So the fetch, again, um, the first step is to load MAR um, with the content of the PC. Um, PC is um, top there, right? Um, and MAR is down here. Um, so this is the way how um, the content of the PC um, goes all the way uh, to be written to MAR. Again, MAR is particular register. Uh, remember that PC also um, is a particular register uh, that contains, that it maintains the, um, the next memory address, right? Um, 
So it's very simple. Um, and we discussed about the, um, the bus. Um, you have some um, buffer, um, gated buffer there, um, like gate PC. Um, you need to enable that in order to read the content, for example, for PC into the bus, right? Um, and you have also um, down here, you have LD uh, MAR, um, means load um, uh, MAR. You need to enable that in order to write to this register. Um, so all of this uh, needs to happen in order to do that. But at the same time, you want to increment the content of PC by one. And you need to have a mechanism in order to do this um, appropriately because um, these, all of this um, incrementing the content of the PC uh, by one and writing to MAR happens in one clock cycle, right? Um, both, both of these operations um, uh, happens in one clock cycle. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, you need to be careful and hopefully we discuss uh, briefly um, how you can use um, the um, certain logic gates uh, in order to uh, make this happen. Um, and here you see that um, this increment needs to go through uh, PC mux. Uh, here, um, you basically select this particular input of the MUX in order to um, put the content into the PC and you have load PC there in order to um, write to this um, PC uh, register. The second step is to um, access the memory. Um, Right, so you have um, the particular address in MAR. Um, you want to uh, go into the memory and retrieve this uh, content from the memory and load it to MDR. Um, and then once you have uh, the content of this memory in MDR, you need to um, perform the the third uh, step, which is loading the um, content of MDR into uh, IR, uh, instruction register. And again, this is, um, for this, um, you have uh, load um, IR here, you need to enable that. You have also gate MDR, you need to enable this um, in order to first write to the bus and then from the bus uh, to the IR. And at the same time, obviously, you want to uh, make sure that nobody else is writing to this bus. Um, so, for example, you don't want to, um, you, you don't want to, the content of whatever you write to the bus is written to MAR, uh, right? So you need to disable uh, load uh, MAR. Um, at this step uh, when the operation happens. Any question about this? All of these up steps, like for example, in the fetch, only in the fetch step, um, like loading, um, the first step happening in one clock cycle. Um, but step two, memory access, um, may happen in one clock cycle, may happen in like two, three, 10. It, it really depends like um, on the um, basically um, technology that you will use for memory. Um, so it's really, um, and several other um, architecture decisions uh, we will discuss throughout this um, course. Um, so it really, um, the period, um, how many clock cycle you require for each step it really depends on uh, what, uh, what exactly you do in that particular step. But all of these, all of these three steps, uh, it's what's happening uh, for um, 
in 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 for stage um, fetch. Um, any question so far? So in order to um, make it uh, a little bit more clear um, and refresh your mind, like uh, for example, uh, how this gate PC look like, um, I'm sure you already, uh, you should know this uh, from the um, digital design course. Um, but essentially, you are familiar with uh, digital buffer. Um, digital buffer um, are used, for example, for different purposes when you design uh, a logic gate. Um, like, um, this is a um, simple digital buffer, uh, and you see the truth table when A is uh, 0, um, the output is also 0, 1 is one, a certain um, type of digital buffer are called tri-state buffer, uh, where you have a, um, um, another input, additional input is called enable. Um, when only uh, this enable um, is uh, set to one, uh, the um, input can transfer to output. Otherwise, uh, the output would show a high impedance, meaning that um, the uh, wire is cut. So there is no flow um, between input and output. Um, and this is what is used, uh, for example, in um, LC3 in, um, in gates that uh, you had here, like for example, in gate PC, is a tri-step buffer, right? Or um, this gate MDR is a type of tri-step buffer. Uh, this is the way how uh, it is um, implemented um, with logic gates and gate ALU as well. So all of these, you see that um, you have um, additional input um, that um, indicate the enable um, signal. Um, also, um, specifically about um, the first step, um, again, um, this happened in one clock cycle, right? Uh, both operations of uh, writing to MAR, uh, writing the content of the PC to MAR and incrementing the content of the PC. Like you don't want to uh, basically um, before writing to MAR, add the content of uh, the PC. Um, so basically it, it MAR retrieved the wrong address. Um, you need to do, you need to basically increment the uh, PC right after the content uh, of the previous PC has written to MAR. Um, for doing that uh, in a synchronous way, uh, also there are uh, logic gates uh, in order to uh, enable that. Um, Um, maybe it's better for uh, for me to ask you guys. Uh, do you have any idea what kind of logic gates uh, we can use to enable this? So imagine that um, we have. Um, We want something um, to happen right after, um, so at the end of the current clock cycle, right? So we have one clock cycle, 
this is the problem. Like we have one clock cycle. Uh, we want during this clock cycle, we want to write the content, the current content of PC into MAR, but we would like to increment the uh, current uh, the content of PC uh, by one right after the clock cycle has finished, or in other words, right at the beginning of the next clock cycle. This is, um, this is the uh, problem that we have. Uh, and we want to make sure that uh, both of them happening uh, in a way that we do not write the wrong uh, address to MAR. Are you familiar with um, flip-flops? I'm sure you have had flip-flop before um, in, um, in previous courses, right? In digital design, right? Um, so I see some yeses. Yes, um, essentially um, flip-flops are used for these purposes. Um, so you see a master slave flip-flop here. Um, and um, essentially, um, these are, um, you see the slide correctly, right? Um, so these are um, two um, gated D latches um, that are used for constructing this uh, master slave flip flop. Um, so you see D, this is the input um, signal uh, that you want to transfer all the way to Q, the output. And you have this uh, master um, uh, gated um, D latch and, and also um, a slave. Um, and you see that the clock as another input, um, the clock could be either zero or one, uh, right? Um, and you know that the definition of clock, uh, like here, um, when you uh, look at the uh, plot um, down, um, this is the time view uh, of uh, what's going on. Um, so for example, um, at this point, at point one, um, clock cycle N has just started. And at point four, clock cycle n plus one as a started, right? So these are basically from one to four is one clock cycle, right? And during this clock cycle, so a clock cycle will start when um, basically this signal goes from zero to one and it finishes um, or the next clock cycle, it finishes when the next clock cycle would start. And the next clock cycle would start when the clock signal goes from zero to one, right? Um, so this is the definition of a clock cycle. And during this um, clock cycle at point three, you see that the signal, um, the clock signal would um, go from one to zero, right? Um, and at um, point four, it goes from zero to one. Okay, so this is like the temporal view of um, the clock um, signal. So what's going on here is that um, when, um, for example, here, at the, imagine that at point one, um, the clock um, signal is one, right? Um, so this means that once clock signal is one, uh, the output of D, right, um, whatever it is, now basically imagine that the content of PC, right? Um, since clock is one, um, and this is a not gate, meaning that you cannot write the content 
inside these D latches, right? So uh, basically this uh, D would not transfer uh, to, uh, to the master, right? Um, but um, as you see, the, um, again, the clock signal is also connected to a slave as well. Since during this A, um, basically this a slave is enabled, right? Um, and it's keeping the previous, um, this D latches is a memory, uh, right? So it, keeping the previous uh, state uh, or previous data uh, that is stored in, um, in this um, logic gate, right? Um, at point three, uh, you see that the uh, clock signal goes from one to zero, meaning that you can write to the master. Uh, at this point, uh, you can write the content, write the content of uh, the uh, next PC, like PC plus one to the master, right? And during this period, um, between three and four, since this signal is zero, um, whatever it is written to master cannot be transferred to the slave, right? Uh, because again, it's enable uh, signal is, um, is zero. So meaning that you cannot write to the uh, slave at this point. Um, but you have the uh, next, you have PC plus one currently stored in master, right? At point three. When we transition to point four, um, at point four, um, we are here. At point four, um, basically the master, um, again, um, since the signal would go to one, the master um, is uh, disabled, but the slave is enabled. What's happening is that it pulled the uh, data that was stored in the um, master previously, which was PC plus one, and pull it to, to the slave. So the PC plus one would become available in the right at the beginning of the next clock cycle. This is the way how uh, you can make sure that the right value of PC would be available in the next clock cycle. And you did this operation of incrementing the PC in the, um, essentially in the first clock cycle. But, but basically you can access it right after at the beginning of the next clock cycle when you uh, need that. And this, this was the semantic of PC. Um, we discussed that the PC indicate the next, the address of the next instruction that needs to be executed on the machine. Um, so this is the way how, um, how we can implement um, such um, logic um, and make sure that these operations happens in um, synchronously with the uh, inside the first step of the fetch uh, phase. Is that clear? Is there any question? Sorry, I cannot see the chats um, properly. I've Okay, sounds good. Yeah, if, if you have any question, please um, talk. Um, I cannot see the chat. Uh, okay, um, so this is the way how um, this is implemented uh, on the machine. Let's um, discuss the uh, next step. Um, so, so far, we only reviewed the first step. Fetching. Next step is decoding. Um, decoding is very simple. You need to, you have an instruction. Um, you need to decode what it is. Um, 
or in a way to identify uh, the instruction. Um, and decoding is also uh, a logic gate. Uh, I'm sure you are familiar with decoders. Um, and in particular, um, in this case, um, in the case of uh, LC3, uh, you need a 4 to 16 uh, decoder, meaning that uh, if you remember for LC3, you had four bits uh, to encode um, the instruction, and in total, you had 16 instruction, right? So, a 4 to 16 decoder can identify which uh, operation uh, needs to be executed, right? So um, this um, 4 opcode um, can, um, can um, decode the instruction or can give you the particular instruction that needs to be executed. So basically these uh, four um, bits from 12 to 15 is, um, is the bits that um, encode the instruction in LC3. The remaining 12 bits obviously identify what else uh, needs to uh, process. For example, for um, uh, add, you had um, like uh, the other operands, right, the source uh, and destination register and so on. So to refresh your mind, let's um, recap about decoder, but like decoder is also a simple logic gate. So you have N inputs. Um, as a result, you have uh, 2 over N outputs. Um, and exactly one of these output needs to be enabled, um, needs to be one. Um, and this is the kind of uh, decoders are kind of pattern matcher. Um, so for example, for a decoder of um, two to four, um, so you have two uh, bits of input and four alternative output. Um, so A1, A0 and A1, um, depending on what particular combination you use, you see that uh, one of the output gets execute, gets enabled, right? So if um, A0 is 0, A1 is 0, um, Y0 is selected. If both of them are 1, Y3 is selected. So at um, basically for every combination of the inputs, only one output uh, is selected. So this is the, um, and this is how, how it is shown, a two to four decoder. Uh, depending on the input signal, only one of the output uh, is selected. And this is good for pattern matching, right? So when you have 16 instruction, um, you encode it in a way that you select the right instruction based on the encoding. Whoever encode the instruction knows like what instruction um, wants to uh, wants to be decoded to. Um, yeah, this is the way how you can um, use the uh, lower level logic. Um, um, construct in order to implement um, such decoder, right, um, in order to get the right uh, output um, when you need it, right? So in this case, when um, A is 1, B 0, um, you see here um, that um, this, uh, the third um, uh, choice is selected um, because here, one is here, this is not. Um, and um, as a result, you see um, these are AND gate, right? Um, so you see one here. Um, this is the way how you can use the, um, uh, the particular gates for implementing a decoder. Um, so it's, it's, it's very simple.
and like it has beside this um, it has different usage but um, but essentially um, finding the right instruction is one of the most important usage of decoder as a logic gate um, but it has other um, usage as well um, Okay, um, so decoding, um, so it's um, simple. You have um, some opcode in, um, in where, um, where you can find the opcode. It's simple from uh, IR, um, so your opcode is in the uh, instruction register because you already, um, in the previous step, you already fetched that. You already fetch um, the instruction um, into IR. In IR, you have uh, the encoding for, um, for the, the whole instruction. Um, so, um, you can you can uh, retrieve the um, upcode um, and uh, decode it to particular instruction that you want to execute. Um, so, for example, you can um, retrieve the uh, last four bits of the IR uh, in order to get the right instruction. But also, you need to decode. Um, like the operand, what operand you need to have access and so on. Um, this is what's happening uh, in, uh, in decoding. Um, so very, um, very simple. Again, like a particular logic gates, you need decode um, to, in order to implement this. Next phase is evaluate. Uh, Evaluate um, address is also um, simple. Um, compute the address of the memory location that you need to um, that needs that you need in order to process the instruction, right? Um, so um, this phase, for example, um, is necessary in LDR uh, when you. Uh, wants to retrieve the content of the memory and put it in uh, a register, um, like in LDR um, instruction, um, but not necessary in add, um, because in add, um, you don't um, evaluate the address, at least in MIPS uh, or LC3, uh, add operates on the content of the register and the content of the registers already contains the um, data that you want to manipulate uh, with app. So this um, phase is not mandatory or essential for all instruction, but uh, in some instruction, you need that. So in LDR in particular, you need to um, compute the address of the word data um, by adding the offset to the content of the register, which indicate the base address. If you remember the register indicate the base address and you need to add this offset in order to, um, in order to um, load the right uh, data into the register. In particular here, um, the way how it is done uh, is that, for example, um, you need to obviously have access to um, some of the encoding from the uh, IR. Um, this is where, uh, for example, you can find the immediate um, 
the immediate is encoded in uh, in the structure, right? Um, and you need to have access to the register. So you see one input from the register file. Um, for example, this is um, this is in L this is what you need in um, the way how it works in uh, LDR, right? In LDR. Uh, a register um, indicate the base address, so you need to um, you need to have that. Also, an immediate uh, in instruction um, indicate um, the offset, right? Uh, so you need both of them. Uh, add them together in order to go um, to calculate an address. So once you calculate, you, once you add them uh, together, you need to calculate, basically particular address gets generated. You need to go and basically put it on the bus, put it on MAR and then retrieve it back. Um, so this is the way um, how it is done. Um, so you need to evaluate an address um, uh, for, for uh, at least for LDR in this case and for a few other comments. I hope this is clear for you. Um, so um, maybe you need to also look at um, this particular instruction if you cannot recall how, how um, LDR looked like, but hopefully you remember like LDR was like you had an offset uh, plus a base register in order to um, to know what exactly you want to retrieve into the register into um, a destination register. The next phase is um, fetch operands. Um, so. Um, you need to obtain the source operands uh, to process the uh, instruction. Um, in LDR, um, in particular, you need to um, load MAR with the address uh, calculated in evaluate address um, in uh, previous step. And read uh, memory um, by placing source operand into MDR. Um, in add um, is different slightly. Um, you obtain the source operand from the register file. Um, and obviously, um, yeah, depending on the uh, microprocessor, the particular implementation varies. Um, there are some details, but uh, for, for now, you don't need to worry about this. Um, so essentially what's happened is that um, you um, you need to um, basically depends on particular uh, operation that you have done. For example, in LDR, um, you remember in LDR previous step um, here we uh, we added base um, to the immediate and we calculated an address. So an address now sits on the bus. Now, what we need to do in the next step, uh, we need to um, read from the bus and uh, put it in MAR. Yes, go ahead. So is the MAR kind of like a, like a pointer for the MDR? Is that a way you can think about it? Because it's like, or yeah, is, is that a way? Because it's like, it has the address and it's referring, that, referring to the data in the MDR? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you can you can interpret it that way. So MAR is a, a pointer to memory, uh, right? So and MDR is um, a register that uh, maintain the content of the memory. Uh, so one is the address, one is the content. Yeah. So in this case, um, for, for the LDR case, uh, fetch operand uh, is, um, is basically uh, what you need to do is to put the um, 
others to MAR um, and then uh, load it to MDR. Um, but uh, in some other uh, operation might be different, but um, essentially this is what's happening uh, for, uh, for this phase, for this particle phase. Uh, do you mind going back to the last slide for a second? Um, this one? Yeah, thank you. Do you have any particular question? No, I just needed to copy some down really quickly. Thank sure. you. And you know that like in add, um, um, is um, is different. You obtain the source operand from the register file, right? So the data pass would be different uh, for add uh, instruction. But for LDR, this is what you have seen in the slide. So for add, you need to have access to the register file in order to retrieve the operand. Okay, and the um, um, next state, uh, ne next phase is um, execute. Um, and it's very simple, right? You need to, you need to execute uh, your instruction. Um, if in add, um, basically you need ALU uh, to perform the addition. Um, like uh, for example, um, like um, you have um, two operand in this case um, coming from your uh, register file. Um, in this case, um, they're sitting on SR1, SR2, right? Um, source register one and source register two. Um, And you see the way how they are connected to ALU, right? Um, why do you think you need a new max here? Um, can you? Can you give me a reason why we need a like max here um, before um, at least on uh, a, a source register too? Any guess? You need to select like what operand you're going to add from the memory. That um, that's right, but um, but why um, why we need that for like for example um, SR two? Like think about it. Like for um, for add. Um, how many operands do you need? Uh, you need uh, two, right? So you need both of them, like SR1 and SR2. Uh, so in this case, you need to um, basically this finite state machine, take care of it, um, it enable, um, enable this. Um, so this SR2 would go uh, to ALU and this addition would happen as a result, right? And once this addition, um, these two values gets added together, uh, the output would be written to, um, to the bus as a result. Um, but the answer is very simple. You do not need two operands, uh, right, in all instruction. Right, uh, and that's why um, you see a max here. Um, sometimes you want uh, the data come from 
somewhere else, like for example, memory instead of uh, register file. That's why you see another uh, another input to the max, right? Uh, one input is coming from the register file. Another one coming from somewhere else is not like uh, indicated here um, because this is not the whole picture of uh, LCT. Um, but could come from like memory or could come from like somewhere else, right? Um, so, um, and that's why, um, that's why you see a mux here. So you have a selection mechanism in order to, um, to make that happen. That's, um, that's basically the execution phase. Um, again, simple. And then once you execute the instruction, like in terms of like add uh, instruction, you have a value. Uh, now sits, now this value sits on the bus, right? You need to uh, store this back uh, in terms of add into um, the destination register, right? Um, or wherever it is uh, designated uh, to be written. Uh, in add is a destination register, but sometimes might be somewhere, somewhere else, right? Um, depending on the particular instruction. Um, and once um, this um, store result phase is completed, um, new instruction cycle uh, start by the first phase, which was uh, fetching. Um, so result again, um, like for example, in LDR, uh, load the MDR into um, destination register. In this case, um, you have a destination register, so you need to tell registration file, uh, uh, register file, what destination register you want to write to. Also, you need to send a write signal, load, sig load data into register. You need to enable this. Would otherwise, you cannot write to the register file. Um, and then you, um, you can send, um, like for example, the content of um, the MDR all the way to, um, to the target register, um, to the target um, destination register, right? This is for LDR, but for add, the data pass would be from the ALU all the way to destination register, right? Um, so the data pass depends on the particular instruction. In this slide, you see that, um, you see the LDR because LDR basically, what was LDR? You give the address, you want to retrieve the memory, uh, the content of the memory, put it in uh, inside a particular register. And like um, previous step has been done um, and you have the uh, data in MDR, you need to uh, store it in particular register, but in add, um, you have the value sitting on the bus, you need to put them, put it in, in particular destination register again. And for that, um, you need to set the right signal for, for all of this to make this happen. Again, like you, you need to make sure that nobody else write to the bus, um, the data go to the right destination. And that was the um, last um, phase. Um, and once like, you're done with the store result, you go uh, to the next um, cycle uh, from fetch uh, all the way to decoding, evaluate address, fetching operand, execute, and a store result. And this would go on and on as a loop. Um, so 
so so far um, so good um, but then you may ask hey um, like this uh, this will you you execute the um, uh, instruction one by one like your PC would increment like one by one and you do that um, as we discussed but um, we cannot jump into particular uh, address in, inside the memory and like you have some intuition we somehow need this jump because like we need to uh, we need to be able to write more interesting uh, semantic or programs like we need to have like uh, if we need to have some loops uh, for all of this we need to jump um, to particular memory address uh, these are uh, we, they cannot be implemented with just um, sequential execution so we need to um, to have some instruction to enable jumping to a particular memory address And as a result, we have some control instruction um, beyond uh, the instruction that we have already discussed so far, beyond the addition stuff, the um, basically beyond the R type and I type in MIPS, for example. We also need J type, jump, um, or control instructions. Uh, that allow the program to execute out of sequence. And the semantic of it is very simple, is you need to change the uh, PC by, um, by particular address you want to, um, you want to uh, jump into. And this happened during the execution. Um, during the execution, you load the PC to a new uh, address. Um, and this obviously would delete the previous uh, incremented uh, PC address. And you know that uh, the incremented PC address, um, the, the PC has already been incremented during the first phase um, in the cycle, in the fetch. We already discussed that. So in LC3, um, it's called unconditional branch um, or jump. Um, this is the way how it looks like JMP uh, to particular. Um, it has one operand. Uh, it's a, a particular register. Um, in this case, R2. Um, this is the encoding. Um, so you have 1100 indicating this particular instruction. Uh, you have again like four bits for opcode um, and three bits uh, in the middle um, indicating the base uh, R, in this case R2, um, the base register. Um, so you write essentially you have the uh, address you want to jump into in R2. And then the semantic of this uh, instruction is that whatever you have in your base register, write it to program counter. Very simple. And you have some variation that we we'll discuss later on, for example, um, when we want to um, like jump and link, when we want to, for example, call a particular method and so on, but we'll discuss them later. And in MIPS also is called unconditional branch or jump um, is uh, in assembly, in MIPS assembly is uh, written by J um, to a target, uh, where target is encoded by 20, six bits um, and you have six bits uh, for encoding the, uh, the instruction. Um, in this case, um, J is uh, encoded by two. Um, 
this is again J type of J type instruction. So in MIPS, you have I type, R type, and this is the J type, right? Um, so I type was the type of instruction where you indicated the immediate. R type was the instruction that where you needed these registers um, like add, for example. Um, and J type is for jump. Uh, so you have target address and this is the semantic of, uh, of this. Um, so you have this target, um, which is indicated um, in this 26 bits, you, um, you use the four opcode of the PC after you increment it, uh, you incremented it. Um, and this four opcode, um, you will, um, so basically this four opcode indicate the, like um, the base where the memory uh, where the um, basically where the memory uh, section for the instruction uh, um, reside, um, and then you uh, you or it uh, by um, sign extending uh, the target whatever you have in the target uh, and multiply it by four. Um, so this is the way how you generate um, the target address uh, for, uh, for the jump. Um, and you know that this, um, um, essentially this um, in MIPS, you need 32 bits for, um, for doing so, right? The memory addresses are 32, uh, bits and um, here with this encoding, like for example, for, uh, for um, the um, J type, you have, you need six bit for uh, encoding the instruction itself. So you, you only have 26 bits uh, for the target. Um, and that's why you need these four additional um, for additional bits from the PC, also you need to sign, extend the target. Um, um, so when you sign, extend the target, um, essentially um, multiplying uh, a, a binary number bar four, meaning is you, you need to shift that um, to the left. Um, like two times. Um, so you need to add two additional bits um, as your sign uh, bits. Um, so you need to sign extend your um, target. So you have 26 uh, plus two, 28 in total, plus four out of the PC, 32 um, in total. And that's how you get the 32 bits for the uh, address that you need to put in in the PC. So hopefully this is uh, clear. So you have a target of 26 bits. You need to sign extended it by two bits, two additional bits to make it 28. And then um, you add this uh, to the PC to the four additional bits you get out of the PC um, in order to build the um, address that you want to put inside the um, the PC register. Do you have any question about this? This is the way how, this is the semantic of jump. Um, And there are, um, again, variation in MIPS like jump and link uh, for function call um, jump register when instead of uh, immediate, um, you have um, a particular register in order to, um, 
to to have the address jump register jumped into the uh, particular register particular address that is stored in the register um, like in this case s0 and also the um, jump and link is useful for function calls like for example when you call a function um, you need to jump a particular address and also um, once you are done with that function you need to um, come back uh, where you call the function so um, this is where um, jump and link is uh, is used um, but we'll discuss more detail later on And um, for example, in this case, um, like for example, when you have um, jump to a register, you need to have a source register um, coming from your register file. You, um, you add this data path, so your, uh, your address um, comes from this particular register. Um, all the way to this PC mux, and then uh, would be loaded to PC once you enabled or once you enable this load PC signal. Um, and that's why you need a mux here because one input coming from this increment, right? The other input is coming from the cases like this when you need to jump to a particular address that either comes from the register file or sometimes comes from the memory. And this is like not shown here, uh, but sometimes this address um, comes from memory. Um, so you need multiple, and that's why you needed multiple inputs to, uh, to the PC. And that's why you needed max here um, before, before this um, register. So somehow this um, gave you some ideas why you needed these building blocks, uh, at least for this simple computer LC3, um, or why designer of this computer has decided to put these building blocks together. Okay, um, let's um, stop here. Um, but essentially um, today um, what we have discussed uh, was mainly looking into um, the execution uh, of the instruction that we have discussed last time. Um, and we'll continue uh, with some more detail uh, about um, some other instruction, the, especially the control of the instruction cycle um, the estate uh, machines and so on um, next time um, to, to understand this uh, um, with, with a little bit more detail from different perspective. Uh, but so far, if you think about it, at least um, you should have some ideas um, how to, uh, how you can talk with machine. Um, and how this um, instruction um, would get executed um, inside the machine. Um, when we discuss about macro architecture, um, so you know, um, we even go uh, deeper inside this. So we uh, we deal with these uh, digital building blocks in order to um, to understand. Um, or be able to uh, at least get a chance uh, to understand how, how we can design such computer. Um, but so far, we at least get some idea how these are executed. Uh, but for building such computer, you need more detail to understand how you need to make design decision. Um, 
and how these design decisions would impact the performance of the system as a result. Okay, uh, sounds good. Uh, I would stay here for a few more minutes. If you have a question, let me know. But um, have a good weekend. Um, please make sure that uh, you submit um, the quiz uh, on time. Um, and if you have any additional question, please feel free to send it uh, over Piazza. Um, hopefully um, somebody will answer those questions. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, there is a question. Are there any resources that we should look at before taking the quiz? Um, yeah, I mentioned that uh, in the uh, Piazza uh, uh, announcement. Um, that maybe um, the first uh, chapter of the book um, is a um resource that you can look at it um yeah that that should be helpful um for you to answer the questions um sure 